appreciate you guys for taking some time out this evening to talk with me. This is a topic in terms of finding your purpose and finding your passion, something that I've been dealing with a lot this year. Um, and honestly, I've been thinking about it over the last year or so, because uh, I've been just around people and noticing people who have been kind of just walking the earth almost aimlessly. And um, I see so much, I see so much potential in other people, but yet they have to be able to find it in themselves in order to become productive. So the purpose of this discussion today is to uh, to help folks, not who are just here, but those who will see this, hear this, um, be able to figure out their purpose and plan in life. Um, for those of us who may have figured it out or have an identity, um, sharing what that journey has looked like, maybe any advice, tips um, that you could offer that might help someone else um, on that journey and down that path as well. If I could just have you introduce yourself, um, tell the people a little bit about who you are, what you do, um, and then why you were here today to, to join in this discussion. I'll start with you, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Mayhew, um, I actually just quit my full-time job um, in corporate on September 11th to go full-time in my business. And so what I do is I work with small business owners and their digital marketing and business strategy. Um, but for individuals is really where I geek out. I love te teaching people how to create a life that excites them. Uh, and then monetize that excitement so they can live that life on their own terms. So when we're talking about passion and purpose, uh, very much a conversation that I love to have. And um, I think, Kellen, you actually saw a video that I put out uh, a couple of weeks ago on some platform and you asked me to, to, to hop on today. So I'm just, I'm just glad to be here and part of the conversation. I'm Brianna. Um, I am currently a first year grad student at Michigan. Um, I'm studying nutrition and I want to be a sports dietitian. Um, and right now I'm in transition kind of. I um, did five years on the track team. I have like two years more of eligibility because of like injuries and stuff, but I'm currently battling another injury that looks like it might be career ending. And so things are just kind of shaking up for me right now. And I think that I'm kind of being rerouted. So um, I'm kind of just using my time to um, invest in my future, invest in professional connections, um, doing everything that I need to do to kind of, um, I guess, build the life that I want. Kind of like Jeff said, like I really am trying to, um, I feel like I'm in the space right now where I can set myself up to do something that I really love down the road and so that I, um, I'm never, you know, growing tired of working or doing something that, you know, I'm not really even passionate in. So um, I just thought it was relevant for the stage of life that I'm in right now. And I think it'll be good to just connect with people and to just hear some things from others. Um, a cultural influence, whether that's through music, comedy, production, um, all those things. During the day, I work at William Chapman Academy as a community school coordinator. I just always enjoy having conversation. I am a talker, ask Torian. I talk, 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 talk. Uh, but I, I really like to hear other people's perspective. Um, and I always tend to learn a little bit about myself uh, when I have to talk about myself because it's not something I like to do very often. Um, so I get to learn something. Um, so, yeah. My name is Destiny. Um, I graduated from Grand Valley with a finance and marketing major back in 2015. Um, right now, I am working as a life insurance agent. Um, I used to work for the city of Detroit in their finance department, but they stopped contract workers um, to last 2019, June-ish. Uh, so haven't been working in my field since then. Um, so right now, just really just trying to figure out what it is that God wants me to do, how he wants me to do it. Um, so I'm on this call to pretty much just get to, to listen in. Um, and to, I guess, uh, share my experience in any way I can. But for the most part, um, I'm just trying to have an open ear. Hello, my name is Torian Pruitt. Um, I'm currently in school uh, for marketing. I want to, the goal is to become a brand manager. I bounced around, um, and, you know, trying to find, you know, my purpose. You know, I have lots of passions. You know, a lot of people said, oh, you know, maybe you should do something in music. And I'm like, I don't know, do I want to have a career in music, you know? And so, like, you know, just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. The path is becoming more clear. And I hope to 
you know, clear the fog even more. How much, how much influence do we allow other people to have in shaping our own identity? And what problems do you think that that creates uh, for an individual who doesn't, who doesn't know their own purpose or plan in life? I would say for the first thing that came to mind when you said that is our parents. Um, that's the pretty much main or only person that has had an influence on my life and what I want to do. Um, to, I guess the, the start of it was when I was getting into college, she had suggested I do something with accounting because I was really good at money. Um, and so I took some accounting classes, didn't like it. And so I switched to finance. Um, so that just, you know, plays a part that this is that parents really have a high influence on how you shape your life. You know, I think there are a lot of influences, um, in our lives when it comes to exactly, you know, not just the life that we want to live, um, but, but exactly how we want to live that life. You know, she had talked about parents, um, you guys are a little bit younger than I am. But you see those influences, you know, as you go. And I think sometimes we don't realize how big of an influence other people have until we start to really do our own thing. And then you start to get pushed back and you start to question, maybe I shouldn't do this, right? Because you ask, what, what impact does it have? It can have you question your whole existence and that, you know, this is what I really want to do on the inside. But every time I tell someone to get shot down or to give me a million reasons why I can't do it. So is this really what I should be doing when in, in, in fact it is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if we're not in tune and confident in that, uh, we, we can miss the boat, man. We can miss the boat because we're so caught up in what everybody else is feeling. I think that's a great point, Jeff, because as soon as you said that, my immediate thought is, outside of God, there really probably shouldn't be a ton of people that you're always consulting with. Um, because the moment you start do the, doing that, you just open the door for all kinds of opinions and thoughts and um, that start to water down whatever ideas or excitement that you had about your vision, your life. So um, for some people, it could be as simple as mitigating how many people you should or express your thoughts and interests and ideas with. I don't know, when I was younger, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, which was become an orthodontist, you know, first dentist and orthodontist. And I, I was just so set on that path. Like I had started school, you know, college with that in mind. Um, and like, even my, my uh, dad, you know, my stepmom is a dentist and my dad was like, yeah, you know, you do this, you, you know, you can basically get in with, you know, her and, you know, eventually take over, you know, you're set up, you know, you in trying to, just really throw that in my mind. And then by, by the time I hit my senior year at Grand Valley, I was like, ooh, I don't want to do this no more. And then, of course, he was upset. <laughs> but, um, but I just had to do what I had to do. And just by show of hands, how many of you would say that you know exactly why you're on this earth, what your purpose is, what you've been called to do? Just by show of hands. Am I the okay. only one? <laughs> No, 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 no. You, you weren't. Oh. I think your hand went up, Jeff's hand. I'll throw my hand up because I feel like I've always known, but I'm starting to, to walk into it a little bit more. Um, so half of us, um, but there's a lot of people in the world who don't, simply don't. So um, I'll go to Torian. What's that journey been like? Um, not really knowing. Like, How do you approach? What's your mental state every day? And how do you approach your day? Um, with that in the back of your mind or something that, that, that you carry with you? For me personally, you know, it's just still trying to figure things out and, you know, still trying to hone in on, I guess, maybe the one thing or the two things, you know, out of the many passions that I have, but having a clearer picture, um, there's definitely more motivation, you know, there's more drive to want to um, really figure this thing out. Uh, yeah, I kind of laugh when you ask that because that's such a loaded question. <laughs> such a loaded question for me. Um, I was actually young though, 17, 18 years old when I first kind of realized. I've always been a talker. And so, um, and for me, when you talk about my calling, my purpose is twofold. You know, there's a spiritual component um, as far as ministry and things on those lines. But then there's also the natural component, um, but they two run simultaneously, right? So 
you know, we, we all have gifts, talents, um, the way that we're wired for, for a reason, right? And so, like I said, I'm a talker. Um, I'm naturally a motivator. Uh, you know, I'm the one that's always encouraging everybody else and trying to help them along their way, which is one of the reasons why uh, I started the business that I started to help people identify their passion, right? And then monetize it. So for me, uh, my journey was a little bit different because I heard from God directly when it, as it related to my spiritual calling, right? But from the, the natural standpoint, um, for me, it was just really getting true to who I am as a person and identifying really what I'm good at, you know? Um, as I started getting older, I always was uh, the sales guy. Every job I ever had was either sales or some type of customer service. It wasn't necessarily by choice, um, but those are just the jobs that just best online. Like my dad, we talked about, um, you know, influence from other people. My dad always wanted me a factory guy. He worked at GM. He retired from GM. He wanted me to come work at GM because back then it was a good job, right? It was stable. You could retire there and blah, blah. I ain't want to work in no factory, man. Like, I need people. I need to talk, right? So it, it was a problem when I graduated from high school. Shortly thereafter, I was a single parent, and my dad wanted me to come work in a factory, and we butted heads for a minute. because. But by then, I was already aware of what I wanted and didn't want, what I was good at, and what I saw myself doing. So I think at the end of the day, and I know I'm rambling, but I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to where does your mind wander? Where does it go when it wanders? You know what I'm saying? Like when you're laying in bed at night or when you're sitting in the classroom and, and everything is going on, you're not really paying attention. What are you daydreaming about? Maybe you go into that direction, it's not what you want, but you can tweak it and go back and try other things. So um, for me, it was just, like I said, just a matter of really being in tune with what I was good at and what, what made me happy. Um, it's a journey that I'm, kind of ever on. I don't think my purpose ever changes, but what I'm learning is that the vehicle of which I use to fulfill that purpose changes. Um, so, and, but it's taken me kind of a while to figure it out. Um, I know that without a shadow of a doubt, I'm put on this earth to influence people um, and to just be an influence. And whether that is through music, whether that is on stage producing, doing comedy, whether that is teaching a room of fourth graders science, whether that is teaching Sunday school, uh, whatever I put my hands to do, I know that it's to be a, a positive influence. And I think before I got very stuck on the how, or, you know, am I supposed to be a teacher? My, like I remember being in college and changing my major a bunch of times, changing so many times they kicked me out. They said, come back when you figure it out. Uh, you know, trying to figure out, do I want to be a lawyer? Do I want to be a judge? Do I want to be a teacher? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? But realizing that the bottom line was, was impacting and influencing lives, but knowing that it can happen through different, different vehicles. And I think sometimes we get stuck on what are we really good at, you know, and just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean that that's what your purpose is. I'm, I have multiple passions, um, but that doesn't make it, you know, my purpose. I'm talented in multiple things, but I'm not gifted in all of those areas. I'm a talented rapper. OK, I have bars for days, but I'm, I'm not, my purpose is not to rap and I'm not a gifted rapper. And I think sometimes, uh, especially when we're young and trying to figure it out, we get kind of caught up in the what as opposed to, you know, the why or you know, we could cut on that how as opposed to what it is we're actually, you know, supposed to be doing. A gift is designed to be given. So for those who are musically talented and musically inclined, um, give that gift. For those that are design uh, that are, are creatives in terms of whether it's brand managing and marketing or designing clothing or um, any any creative outlet, it's a gift. And I think whatever you find out or figure out your gift is. Um, it's best to give that. Don't hold on to that because the more, the longer you sit on that gift um, and you're not actually giving it to the world, then you're doing yourself a disservice as well as those. So I think identifying whatever your gift is is super important um, in terms of finding out whatever your calling is or your purpose is on the earth. So for some people, um, 
finding and figuring out their purpose is as simple as thinking back to who they were when they were younger, when they were a child. Connecting with that that inner kid in you. Who who were you when you were five? What got you excited when you were when you were a little kid? Destiny, I'll start you off. Yeah, playing, hanging out with family, playing games with family. Just playing games, and I still like that to this day. Like I'm a very family oriented person, so I think it was playing playing games with family um, and friends, and just having fun. You know, um, going outside. Um, I enjoyed playing basketball, so I think it it dated back to when I was a, a really young 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 girl. Um, but yeah, I would say just playing games for the most part. Even at a young age, I'm the youngest of four, and so with the house of six, I think everybody kind of just. Well, I like to help people, but I think at one point they started taking advantage of me because they knew I would do it. So like, I just grew up kind of you know helping people and. Um, I realized that that was something that I love to do and it's something that I still love to do now. So um, I think that's kind of shaped adulthood and shaped um, career pathways and just being pre-health and figuring out how I can get involved in communities and um, help other people and kind of make it a lifelong thing. When you mentioned it before, I actually had to go back and ask my mom, like, mom, what was I like when I was five? Uh, she said I did not act like rules applied to me and I did what I wanted. She said I was very brute, but I was still very compassionate. She said she didn't understand how I could be compassionate but brute at the same time. And and I'm kind of the same way now. Uh but I think what excited me a lot was she said imagination and just wonder, just being able to pretend all the time was um was very exciting for me. I do remember wanting to be an actor. Uh, and I still practice getting shot all the time in the mirror just to practice my face to see what it looks like. I'll show you one time when we have brunch. Um, but yeah, I would say that just imagination and wonder excited me as a kid. I really had to think. As far as I, as far as I can remember, um, even as a small kid, I was always one that looked out for uh, the underdog or the person who appeared to be the victim. Like I've always had a heart, you know, for that. Like in um, in elementary school, I wasn't, I was like a trouble kid. I didn't fight a lot, but if I got into some type of trouble or fight or something, it was always because I was sticking up for some kid that was being picked on. Or I remember I had a friend over and my mom said something mean about him after he left. And I was like, how did you say that about my friend? He's a nice, you know, he's a nice person. You should say it. So I felt it was always like, you know, um, but I think it ties to that whole motivation piece, you know, because I'm always like, I'm drawn to the hurting. I'm drawn to the person that's been beat down, the one that seems like they on the surface are losing the fight, you know, and trying to pick them up, encourage them and bring them on. So, but yeah, as far as I can remember, that's that's been my my story. We stop dreaming. We stop, you know, we stop at trying to excel and exceed and trying to to I think the pressure of life becomes a lot and understandably so. Um, but it beats us down so much that we forget to to dumb things down or make them simple, to keep dreaming, to keep striving and to to not let situations in life, which may only be for a moment derail your future. So sometimes it's as simple as thinking about what what gets you excited? What gets you motivated? If you are if you're to take yourself out of whatever situation and moment you're in, even if it's struggling trying to figure out what what you're called to do, what gets you going? I think it, we owe it to ourselves to continually do that. Um because at the end of the day, no one's responsible for for our successes and our futures um except for us. Um so this year has been a, a pretty interesting year for everybody. Um, Evan, I'll start with you. How have you been able to fulfill your purpose in this crazy year, or has it been simply hard to do that considering the circumstances? Yeah, actually, I've been thinking a lot about that. And it's been a little, not necessarily harder, but just different and more intentional. And it's actually something that I'm, I've challenged myself to rise up to the occasion on, um, I, it's easy for me to like hide behind a microphone in front of a crowd and they, you know, do events. But because none of that is there, I have to be intentional about staying active on my YouTube channel and posting on Instagram and not caring too much about, you know, for me, like I, 
I would stop myself from posting stuff or doing too much because I didn't want it to look like I was doing too much or didn't want to look like I was, you know, just all over the place. And so I've had to really, really be intentional about um, being strategic about just being myself and putting that out there and having conversations like this and saying yes to, you know, to stuff like this. Um, I'm more... um, outwardly introspective in this conversation than I am ever. Usually I don't share what I think. I say what I think the people around need to hear to make them smile. Um, So it's been different for me during this time because I've had to adjust that. It being on camera or being things virtually requires a little more vulnerability than to me requires a little more vulnerability than, you know, being in the public, you know, being in a crowd or something like that. So it's definitely made me have to be more authentic, um, you know, and that's, and also to keep engagement that way, um, to be authentic, to be authentically myself. Like I put out a music video, I don't know if you guys have seen it, it's called Quarantine Won't Last Always. Quarantine. Uh, I took my shirt off in the video and um, I don't really have a nice, nice body uh, there, but it was fun and it was funny. And that's the type of comedy that I do when I'm just at home or with my family. Like, that's just me. I was myself. I was, if you ever, like, that is the epitome of me. It's taking my, and just letting my stuff jiggle while I'm jumping. Like, that's just me. And I had to really push myself to, to really do it. So I have, I don't know how, if I'm answering the question, man, but I just, 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 yes, yeah, just go, just do, just do it. <laughs> um, I think that I'm kind of in a weird phase right now where, um, like nutrition is what I want to share with the world, but I don't necessarily have all the tools yet. So like, you know, my grad program is two years. So just kind of looking at, you know, what I can be doing in the meantime, because just because I don't have my degree doesn't mean I don't know anything. So, you know, I think there's things I can be doing now. And I think there's things I can be doing um, once I do graduate and get my master's degree. So it was kind of just about plotting and like figuring out um, what I want to see out of my gift and how I can pour into others through it. Seriously, it's, it's actually been really, um... 2020 has been interesting for me. Uh, like I said, I quit my my job, you know, my nine to five in September, um, because this actually, I don't want to say it played well for me, but it worked out well for me. A lot of, like I said, people are hurting right now. A lot of people are really struggling to find out, to find some sense of peace or hope or anything that they can just grab onto. And so someone like myself, it, you know, as as sad as it is, it it works out well for me to be able to deliver my message. Um, But then from the digital marketing and online business perspective, you know, um, Evan talked about how we can't get like comedy, you know, shows, you can't do comedy shows or um, a lot of businesses have been impacted in the same way where they're not having a face to face. So, um, like I said, it just for me end up working out well, because I just happened to geek out in the space that people need right now. So um, I can't complain. People forget to to take care of themselves. And, you know, we we give to other people, we give to our jobs, um, you know, we give to other aspects of life, but not to ourselves. So I think a big element of finding your purpose and your calling in life is figuring out what you need to do to fill up your own cup um, and give to yourself. So uh, does anyone have anything to share as far as how they do that or why that might be important in terms of figuring out your own plan for your own life? Uh, be intentional about that. That would be my two cents. Um, not that long ago, I went on a solo trip by myself. I just went up north to Traverse City. Uh, just for a day, I did some hiking and just kind of hung out. And I didn't realize how important it was to just unplug from everything. Not necessarily you have to go like do hike trails or anything like that, but find something that you can do. Take a day off, legit. Take a day off Facebook and social media. Your mental health, man, you don't even realize how much seeing that same narrative 
having the same argument, saying the same negative stuff is polluting the way you think and the way you see it. It really is. So first thing, I, yes, I would definitely say take some time to just get to yourself again and get away from the toxicity that's floating around out there so that you can ground yourself so that, because if you can't get this right, it don't even matter, man. Purpose, passion, don't even matter because this ain't right. So um, yes, I'm a strong advocate of just taking a day to unplug or taking a weekend to go somewhere, go on a long drive for the day by yourself to get away so you can recalibrate and, and keep fighting, man, because it's hard out here. I just kind of piggyback off of uh, what Jeff is saying, like you can't you know, pour out when you're on empty. And so I think it's important to make sure that uh, you pay attention. And that's uh, something that I have to work on for myself that I'm really, really bad at. Like that's a huge area of growth for me um, because I'm kind of like a just go, go, go emotions later, you know, deal with the problem at hand. Um, but I've realized that it, you know, it's, it's kind of like burning the candlestick at both ends and eventually you, you're not giving a hundred percent. And, you know, it's funny. I was, been ta- I was talking to my wife about um, checking out this gym in Detroit called Inception. It's they branded themselves as the first mental health gym. And so basically you go and like you put these headphones on and you just kind of I don't know. I'm still kind of researching it, make sure I don't come out speaking a different language. But uh, it's basically like an opportunity to kind of unplug and to recharge. And I think what we're we don't acknowledge in our generation is how much social media and um, technology does impact the development of our, um, you know, of our brains. And so, you know, before when generations before us, baby boomers or pe- people even older than that, um, where mental health wasn't, they ignored it and they could kind of get away with it. Well, we know that they didn't really get away with it because we got that crazy aunt and uncle, but um, they kind of ignored it. We don't have that luxury uh, because our psychological brains are being stimulated more, you know, than well, your brain is psychological. But you get what I'm saying? Like we're engaged more in the internet world than we are in the physical world. And so we have to um, take into mind the intangible health things that we need to pay attention to as opposed to just the physical. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but what I'm, but I agree with Jeff that it's important to take that time off and uh, to just kind of unplug. One little thing that I've been doing is, from five to six every day, I just don't answer my phone. It could ring, I can get all these texts. Doesn't matter, just that one hour, I'm gonna just play with my son. I'm just gonna play with the baby, just relax. Just that one hour uh, out the day. And it's made a huge difference. I cuss people out in my mind so much less now uh, than I wanted, <laughs> than I did before. It's just that one hour. So just little stuff, um, you know, to just rejuvenate yourself. So there's one last thing that I'll bring up before we get out of here. But first, from Bree, Torian, and Destiny, I have a question for you. Um, Because at the end of the day, it's all about what's in it for me. Um, What what is what am I going to walk away with? And I love actionable items. So I want to know from each of you really quick one thing that you need um, from either one of us, somebody on this call, somebody you know. What's one thing you need to help you grow in this area? Um, maybe just community i don't know people that are actually like passionate about purpose because this was really helpful in itself and i think um the last you know jeff and evan the points that you guys made even just about um you know unplugging like i was really able to resonate with those because i'm doing that very thing right now and i think um you know when we go back to one of the first questions of you know how do other people influence, you know, what we think we should be doing. And I think when you're around people that know who they are and know what they're trying to do, um, that kind of have their own trajectory, it's, it's easier to be focused, I guess. So I think just like communities, like the first thing that came to my mind. I would say it was just given to me what, um, Jeff and Evan said, as, as far as unplugging, um, yeah, like when they were just talking, I was I, I've heard I've actually just came across the Inception gym this week and I saw my favorite artist, uh, Jonathan Edward Reynolds went um, this week. actually, And um, yeah, and I, that's where I saw it. And I'm like, wow, that looks very interesting and something that, you know, that could help. And so when you mentioned it and then when Jeff talked about unplugging, um, you know, I think that's kind of what I need, because right now I feel like I'm just stagnant. I'm chilling a little too hard, if I'm being honest. Um, 
And yeah, I just need something to, to recharge. And I didn't know what it was. Like, I've always been the type of person that work, you know, for uh, what I want, you know, always had a job. And now I'm just really stagnant and not knowing where to go next. Um, and I'm finding myself not being motivated as I used to be. Um, so yeah, I think that's the, that would be the answer, you know, as far as me getting away, you know, either whether that's going up to Travis and, you know, doing something just by myself or, and, or, and going to this, uh, inception gym. Um, I think I'm actually probably going to do that this week because I really just need to recharge right now because I just don't have anything to pour out is what you guys were saying. Um, so that's what I would say my answer is, is just getting a recharge. So reaching out for someone to reach out to me. So, you know, requesting accountability. So there are a few people that I uh, reached out to specifically, um, you know, to let them know this is what I'm doing. Um, if you could kind of like, you know, walk alongside me on this journey and, you know, hold me accountable because I might get to the point where I'm like, uh, bump all this, you know, I just, <laughs> I just need, you know, someone to be like, okay, you know, keep, keep doing this. You know, you got, you got this. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and I guess at this very moment, um, well, this past two months, I guess. So I'm, I'm really good at uh, unplugging and recharging and, you know, self-care and all that. Um, one model that I live by, you know, Evan knows this. I love people, but I love myself so much more. <laughs> My friends laughed at me, but look, that's real. Like... <laughs> So I'm good at that, but these past two months, um, I've been extremely busy, extremely busy, and um, to the point where just the other night when I was with you, Kaylin, um, I was up for like 27 hours, 27 hours, and that that is not the only time that has happened. The opportunity to just really relax and unwind has been really scarce. Like I'm you know, back to back to back to back. So like, you know, when we get off this, I have to get up and get ready to go to work. Um, and so I have to like cut out stuff because I'm like, okay, I have to get enough sleep. And I, have to only, I can only schedule one thing per day because I'm just, you know, just so back to back and there's something every day. And so, um, yeah, I just really need to uh, just find, you know, some way to really relax and unwind um, like I used to. We're at time, and I can certainly talk about this all day. Um, I can, and if anyone has the desire to reach out to me or anyone else on this call, um, do it. Um, so a couple of things really quickly that I feel like are super important in terms of finding and fulfilling your purpose. For those of you who are believers or believe in God, seeking God is the first step. Um, because if your heart is open to hearing and receiving, then that certainly that certainly lays the foundation and the pathway for everything that's in front of you. Uh, figuring out your underlying purpose behind everything that's that you consider a passion, everything that interests you. What what's the underlying connection behind all of that? Um, what gifts and skills do you possess? Again, I'll stress a gift is designed to be given. So um, if you can figure out what those gifts are, and even if you know, uh, uh, lean into it, give it, offer it to other people. Uh, don't live your life life based on the opinions of other people. Um, you're just, you know, you don't, you don't want to live your life based on everyone else's opinion because you're only setting yourself up to be torn down, finding someone, somebody that will hold you accountable. It might be uncomfortable. Um, and I've dealt with that a couple of times at various points this year, but finding someone who will hold you accountable will certainly keep you on track and, and force you and push you into becoming the best possible version of yourself. If you desire that, then you'll get there. You'll get there. It starts with that desire, though, for sure. All right. Well, appreciate you guys um, for taking some time out this evening. Um, and let's stay in touch. Um, again, reach out because we're certainly going to be there for each other throughout this journey. So I appreciate you all. Mm -hmm.